The only thing that we're interested in is putting money in your wallet. If you want to bet the fights, if you want to have a little bit of action, you are in the right place. With my partner, Ian Parker, I am Bretto Komodo. We're ready to rock between our parlays, our props, our straight picks. It's time to make money. Let's go. Ah, one of my favorite cities in the U.S. That is Denver, Colorado Ball Arena, which will be home to UFC Fight Night, a women's flyweight bout headlining. Former strawweight champion Rose Namajunas taking on Tracy Cortez. We are on big ESPN this uh, this Saturday, not ESPN Plus, on the mothership in prime time. And uh, here to talk about it from a gambling perspective, I am, as always, joined by Ian Parker, our gambling expert extraordinaire. We are going to get into this entire UFC Fight Night card, as we always do every week. But before we do, let's take a look back at the big UFC 303 card. Alex Beheda getting it done. Ian Parker getting it done at the window as well. We had a good night. You know, we went three and two with Ian Machado Gary. That got a little sweaty. Jillian Robertson, what a phenomenal performance. Smith, the lead, say over two and a half, as we said it would go. Payton Talbot to win over one and a half. He got it done in under a half a second, let alone one and a half rounds. And Pahana Proashka over one and a half missed there. It got to the second round, then he sent a high kick and sent Yuri to another dimension. But we started off really hot. We also hit our parlay. We hit our prop of the night at plus 150. Overall, solid night for 303. We had a great time. Now let's go to Denver. Let's do it again. Absolutely. Great night there in Las Vegas. Uh, hitting the, lot, the the prop of the night, the parlay, those are always nice in addition to our bread and butter best bets. So let's take a look at the uh, the main card for this UFC fight night uh, taking place in Denver at Elevation. Rose Namajunas, a home game for her. She's coming in as a favorite, minus 225 against Tracy Cortez. So we will talk about that fight in detail. You also got Santiago Ponzinibbio on the card taking on Muslim Salikov. It's a six-fight main card. It starts at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, again, on ESPN. And you can find it on ESPN+. Plus if you uh, prefer the streaming platform. And uh, 125 pounds, man. Rose Namajunas got on, you, I guess you could say she got on track against Amanda Hebas, definitely won that fight. 49, 46 scorecards from two of the judges. So is she back? Is she looking like Rose Namajunas? Or do you think that, that uh, the minus 225 is a little high taking on Tracy Cortez? You know what? I think this number is where it should be and really no higher at this point. Look, beating Amanda Hibas is, is a solid move. Hibas is very well-rounded. Black belt jiu-jitsu, black belt judo. Good striking. Also young, up and coming. And Rose needed this win to really figure out, A, who she is, and is this division right for her because she does not want to make that cut. You know, we saw against Madden Fior that was tough, especially with the size and the distance. But she's now fighting someone in Tracy Cortez that is not going to have a size advantage. And really, for Rose, she's just got to watch out for the wrestling here. You know, Tracy's taking this on short notice in elevation. You know, she claims she's acclimated in two days. That doesn't happen in two days. So that that's for starters. And Rose is someone who trains in elevation. She also has the five-round experience. The level of competition is much higher. I think this is a good opportunity for Cortez to come in and get that experience. For her, it's a win-win, in my opinion. If she wins, getting Rose on the resume, amazing. If she loses... She just fought one of the best to do it, regardless of division, and get her first five-round main event. For me, though, Brett, and you may feel different, or I think you're going to agree here, I don't know where Cortez, outside of wrestling, really beats Rose. I, I don't. And we don't know how she's going to be in the elevation situation. Rose can fight there, can set a pace. And Rose has fought dominant wrestlers before. Zhang Wei Li. I hate to say Carlos Esparza because that fight was absolutely atrocious. But for me, I'm willing to lay the juice on Rose Namajunas at minus 225. This is a very winnable fight for Rose on the feet, much better striking, has the finishing ability. Tracy Cortez looked good against Jasmine Jazdavisius, but didn't look, it wasn't a championship performance. I didn't see that and say, oh, she's going to be top five. This is right place at the right time. I think Rose gets the win here. Uh, I do agree with the pick. Um... I, I hate to say, I say, say this because I feel like our viewers are going to be like, anytime Brett gives his take, it's that he doesn't want to bet the fight. But I, this is just a, a fight that I would stay away from because Rose Namajunas has been a little hot and cold so far at, uh, at, at 125. Obviously, she's only had those two appearances. But then uh, Tracy Cortez, she just hasn't fought all that much, man. I mean, well, she only fought once in 2022, once in 2023. This is her first appearance in 2024. So it's just difficult to know kind of the fighter that we're going to get because has she improved during the time what she's been working on you like Rose Namajunas but you said that you didn't think that the line should be any much higher do you like any of these methods of victory here you know what I, 
let's put it this way. I think Rose has the ability to finish here. I think if she tags Tracy for later round, she can grab it. You know, get her back and do a, and get a rare naked choke in there. I mean, we've seen Rose finish before on the feet against Joanna and Jacek, so it's not that uncommon for Rose. However, at this weight, we haven't seen it happen yet. But Tracy's not one of the bigger fighters in this weight class either. So look, I think I'm going to take a long shot prop here with Rose by submission at plus 800. I think she could tag her with a jab later rounds, out grapple her, and take the back. She's got a really nasty RNC, and that's going to be my long shot prop of the night. Yeah, I really like that long shot prop, especially like you mentioned, maybe later in the rounds at elevation. Tracy Cortez was training for a three-round fight, so maybe a chance for uh, Rose to get it done on the ground. Let's move to the co-main event, 170-pound fight. Santiago Ponzinibbio coming on as a uh, uh, almost a two-to-one favorite, taking on Muslim Salikov. What do you think of the odds here? And as well, we're going to take a look at the method of victories. I think it makes sense, and honestly, I really like Ponzinibbio in this spot. He's younger. Both guys are coming off knockout losses. You know, Ponzinibbio at one point was a top-level prospect, and he's looked really good in the past, and this is a very favorable matchup, I believe, for him. You know, Salikov has got a kung fu style. Ponzinibbio is just a sniper of a striker. He's very good. He's got good cardio to go all three rounds. He can set the pace. Doesn't have to worry about getting taken down. He's got true knockout power. As long as he doesn't get hit by some wacky spinning stuff from Salikov, I like the pawns here. That number, please stay where it is. That's as high as I would go. Otherwise, if it goes any higher, I don't even know if I would take a method of victory. If you were to, though, Brett, because whenever I say that, everyone likes to bet every fight. We know how it works in this sport. By TKO or decision, he's not getting a sub here. So you can go double method if you want to get a better price. All right, so there you go. If you want to get a better price, go with the uh, go with the double method there, as Ian mentions. Let's go to the lightweight division. It's Drew Dober taking on Gene Silva, who we just saw a fight two weeks ago. Gene Silva actually is very, very, very tiny favorite, minus 115. What do you think of this lightweight fight? Um, listen, I, whoever lands on that jaw first, I think it's going down. I'm going to go a different route here. Brett, and I like this number. I, I'm going a little bit higher than I'd like. You know that minus 200 is where I live. The fight to end by KO or TKO, I don't care who does it at minus 210. This fight screams violence, and that's exactly what we're going to get. Yep, could steal the show there in Denver, Colorado. Let's go to the 170-pound division. Gabriel Bonfim, a big favorite over Ange Lusa. And uh, you got your prop of the night for this one. Yeah, listen, whenever I get plus odds for someone in Gabriel Bong team to get a sub of the night when that's his specialty, I'm going to take it. Even though Ang Lusa doesn't really have much of a neck, this is one of those fights where Bong team's coming off the first loss of his career. He's got to bounce back. Let's go by sub. We're getting plus 110 for that one. All right, a little bit of plus money there. And then we go to the featherweight division. Julian Arosa taking on Christian Rodriguez. You're going to go with a two-to-one favorite here with Rodriguez. Yeah, I hate to be repetitive. I hate to be chalky here. If you want to go method of victory, TKO, KO, or decision, I, I, you'll get a much better number here. He's a grinder, great cardio. Arosa's fight IQ is not all that great. Rodriguez does not make a lot of mistakes, and he is impossible to finish. Give me C-Rod. And rounding out our main card is a middleweight fight, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. He is a favorite to take it on Cody Brundage. What do you like here on the main card on ESPN? Brett, you've watched enough MMA fights to see. This is the literal one guy's either getting knocked out or the other guy is getting submitted. And that's how I'm going to play this. I'm going to go either Al Hassan by TKO or Brundage by submission. You're going to get that at a little bit over a minus 200 number. If not, do you think that's too high? I think Al Hassan can stop the takedowns and get a knockout at the end of round one, early round two. Nice work there on the main card. And one thing I like about this main card is the UFC has learned their lesson over the years. No heavyweight fights. No heavyweight fights at elevation. They can get a little sloppy up there in uh, Denver, Colorado. Let's take a look at the prelims. Uh, you can find them on ESPN Plus and ESPN. Uh, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Ian, walk us through your full slate of uh, UFC Fight Night prelim picks. Brett, I'm shocked this fight's not in the main card because it might be fight of the night. Joshua Van, Charles Johnson, really fun. I'm going to go underdog here in Charles Johnson. I think he's fought better level competition. Van usually starts slow in round one. The way Johnson looked recently, he can get it done here at plus 180. We're going to go with Jasmine Jazdavisius against UFC newcomer. 
you know, Klein's really solid, but she's fighting up a weight class on short notice. I think Jasmine with the experience gets it done. I'm going to take Montel Jackson over to Mon Blackshear. Blackshear also taking this on short notice. And if Jackson can keep this fight on the feet, his hands are incredible. Luana Santos, Agapova under two and a half. Frem Petroski over one and a half. And I have Evan Elder in there, minus 425. Obviously, we're not going to take him straight up. He will be in the parlay later on. Flowers is on a two-fight losing streak, was finished, and does not do well in elevation. He even said, after the fight in Salt Lake, I would never fight in elevation again. So what did they do to him? A week's notice in elevation. I'm not picking him. <laughs> All right, so as always, there's a pick for every single fight on the card. And where are we going for our long shot parlay, Ian? Oh, uh, we're going to go Gabriel Bonfim by submission, Charles Johnson by decision, and Luana Santos also by submission. Brad, that number is fun. We're going to go. That number is fun, man. Almost 24 to 1 there on the long shot parlay. How about just Parker's parlay uh, for this UFC fight night? This one, not as fun. Let's go Nami Yunus. Let's go Bon Team. Let's go Luana Santos and Evan Elder. We're going to go four favorites. Just win on the money line, and we're good to go. All right, so we hit the parlay at 303. Looking forward again this Saturday. How about our best bets for UFC Fight Night? We're going to go Rose Nami Yunus at minus 225. That's as high as I would go. If you don't like that, go double method of victory. We're going to go Santiago Ponza Nibio at minus 195. Give me Dober Silva. That fight to end by pure violence at TKO or KO. Rodriguez by TKO, KO, or decision. Getting that number from minus 210 down to minus 175. Give me Montel Jackson on the money line. And give me what should be a really ugly fight until one of these guys gasses out. Probably Petrovsky at over one and a half rounds. That's what you want to hear. Give me a bet on a fight that you will hate to watch. It will go over and it will not be entertaining as you do it. But hey, sometimes, you know, sometimes... All these, we, we watch fights for entertainment, but this show is for the money. So if you got to sit through a slow fight and hit that over, you're happy with it with a boring fight at the end of it. Uh, thank you so much to Ian Parker, as always. Fun show, as always. Looking forward to the card in Denver. And then next week, we will be back in the UFC's Apex for another fight night card. And then beyond that, heading over to Manchester, England for a UFC pay-per-view. So enjoy the card, enjoy the fights, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.